This short video approximates the tension on a spoke based on the frequency it emits when it's plucked. The frequency, the fundamental frequency of a stretched string or spoke is given by this equation here where f the frequency is 1 divided by 2 times the length of the spoke times the square root of s which is the engineering tensile stress in newtons per square meter divided by the density, which is the density of the string's material in kilograms per cubic meter. I can simplify my equation into this. I'm setting the tension on my spoke to 1176 newtons, which is 120 kilograms of force times 9.8 meters per second squared. Here is my experimental wheel where you see all of the drive side spokes radially laced so that there's no effect on the tension by crossing spokes. And I have 120 kilograms of force of tension on all of the drive side spokes. My drive side spokes measure 270 millimeters. But after I subtract out a little bit of length that is in the hub and a little bit in the nipple, I get 252 millimeters, which can actually vibrate. The total mass of the spoke is 6.77 grams, of which the vibrating part of the spoke is 6.25 grams. When I solve that little equation, I, I get a calculated frequency of 432 hertz. I download it onto my phone, an app that reads out the frequency of an audio signal. See about 400 and about 490 hertz right about in there. Doesn't stay up long. Good, thanks. Compared to my calculated frequency of 432 hertz, I got an empirical frequency on my n track tuner of 490 hertz. Here is my very accurate calibrated spoke tension measuring device. Right now we see zero tension on the spoke. Here we have approximately 120 kilograms of force on the spoke. Interestingly, applying my tensiometer to that uh, spoke increases the tension about 3% to 123 kilograms of force. So I have a difference in my calculated frequency and my measured frequency of about 13%, which isn't too bad considering it's kind of a crude experiment. So there is obviously a relationship between tension and frequency, and it is possible to calculate it and come fairly close. Can you build good wheels without a knowledge of this? You certainly can, but I think it's interesting nevertheless. So if you are an internet troll and you expected to be entertained by this video, I probably disappointed you, but if you're a wheel builder and you wanted to pick up a couple of nerdy little details, I uh, hope you uh, found this interesting and here's my contact information.